Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel and here I am Tarun Sharma and we were talking about hacker rank certifications. In last couple of videos I have already covered the basic certification. In the next set of videos we are going to talk about intermediate level certifications. Let's say I am going to talk about JavaScript intermediate skill certification and here we are going to do it live and we will understand the problem statement and uh, we'll see how we can crack the test and we can crack the test only if we are able to uh, work on all the tests we are able to pass all the tests and so there are two uh, questions we have user transactions and the parking load okay so let's do one by one here user transactions let's do this first okay this is javascript intermediate okay looks like it's not the easy one and what we need to do implement a function get number transaction it takes a username and it returns either a number of transaction associated with the username or a string username not found if no such user exists, make a gate request to the given rest endpoint that contains information about a user. Okay, it takes some time to understand the problem statement before we start. Okay, so what is the problem statement? Given a username, the user details should be fetched by making a call. So it's like get user detail, where username is the parameter passed to the get number of transaction function. The response will be JSON. Ta -da -ta -da -ta. Okay, so the uh, as example, I want to see the input. In the first, the only line there is a username. Okay, so looks like it's write your code here, and we have these two different endpoints, right? Where we are passing username, and then from there we need to get the user ID. Okay, <clears throat> so first we will hit this where user id is the id property fetched earlier okay so example of user record as follows so it's look like this i'm going to make an api call and it's already using axios so we can require this right and then here i can make the call it's already a sync await so const data let's say response await exios dot get we are already getting the username so just directly hit this api so it's a dynamic expression we need to pass the username That should give us the data const data equal to i mean you can directly destructure it uh, we can directly destructure this that is a better option we can put this in try catch if we get any error okay let's say we got the successful response in the data we got the id now this data contains this object data dot id we can actually do a console dot log data run the code returned by the function so as the user id which per response then the second call is made to the api call total number of transaction which is 79 per the response okay total 75 is it asking for returning the data so here we cannot override it so let's call it as a response because we are already using the data variable so here we can return response dot data will always be there dot total is it this is this what it is expecting 
total number of transaction which is 79 we just need to return this run code your output is 0 expected output is this at least now it's not breaking right so we can just check what we are getting in the response dot data object we are getting username user so this is the first api call we need to hit username user okay and here we need to check if data dot data if that is error dot data is there but data dot data dot length length equal equal to not equal to zero then only do this otherwise what we can say is return username not found i have done this kind of problem it's just only about the trick like what what is the behavior how in which order you should make the api call if this is not equal to zero then we have to make the api call this one right and here so we got some input we got some data data dot data right so if you see the response data dot data dot length so here data dot data dot id it's an array so my question is do i need to iterate on to this and get each and every ids that's a question because data either an empty array or an array with a single object containing okay it can either be an empty or an array with a single object so it will always be a single object you don't need to iterate that's a condition we got so we need to get the user id which will be data dot data we can destructure this data dot data zero dot id and now we can make another call const response equal to and here we need to make another api call passing the user id okay here is the user id so this is our code till now we got the response and then this response will contain the data response dot total this is what we need to return so it will be response dot data dot total we can do console log couple of things console dot log the id this is the user id and then console dot log the response dot data just for our check run the code okay so this looks fine this is the first object contains the user id 1 after that uh, this contains some multiple objects that raises questions this is the user id okay now we can no no this user id is the only single object i didn't do console.log data.data it will be an array it will be an object with a single object inside this data array this is console.log this one which will obviously contain multiple entries run all the test cases and all are passing so i didn't do much right so it's like a very basic approach i did follow read the question properly and what they are looking for in the answer right i can submit this now it's just like you can do a proper variable naming uh, submit okay now we are in this problem statement to create a solution to manage the parking lot it's all about read the question twice thrice 
that will save your time. I also always try to go in the, the faster mode and try to read the question not properly and try to go to the implementation first. <clears throat> Implement the parking lot class that manages a parking lot with the number of slots or a space. The class has the following constructor and methods. So parking lot class is there. Constructor uh, parking lot slots where the parameter of slots size of the parking lot. Slot are numbered consecutively from 1, 3, 2, 3. The method park get slots remove. Okay. Cool. So we can get started at least uh, designing this class. Okay. So we are going to give this input 5, 6, first operation, second operation, and slowly we will get more understanding. So there is a constructor parking lot. Okay. Constructor is uh, same as this is JavaScript, not Java. So constructor here, the constructor parking lot slots. Slots is the input. Slot is the size of the parking lot. Slots are numbered from this. So we can have one variable. So the method park. So then there is a method park with the car car ID. Okay, then there is a method get slots. Return an array of all the parking slots. Let's say it is returning some array, then method is remove car ID. Okay, the, the logged stub code validate the correctness of the parking lot class implementation by performing these operations. So it's like a you created a simple park, a parking lot class, and we will call this create object and call some methods to validate if we have done this correctly or not. Where the parameter slot is the size of the parking lot, slots are numbered consecutively one, two slots, one, two, three, till number of slots. Okay. So let's say I have a variable here. Uh, this dot slots equal to slots is initialized so this dot slots equal to slots park the the, the park the car with the given car, car id at the occupied unoccupied slot with the lowest number and return true with the unoccupied slot with the last number and return true if all slots are occupied the car is not parked and return false okay we have the slot still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is correct. Car ID, the number of get slot written in array of all the parking slots where the ith element is the ID of the car parked there or null if the slots is unoccupied. The method remove uh, frees the parking slot where the car is parked and returns true. It, if it returns false, if the, the car ID is not found, so it's like we need to have the parking as an array. Now let's see what are the tests. The log stuff, the par car, park car ID, if returns value of the call is true, it prints parking started, otherwise it prints parking full card ID. Remove car ID. Okay, get slots for an uh, occupied slot. It prints park at slot, slot number, and the car ID. Okay. Let's get started. So, sample output is this parking started, car 10, car 20, car 30, park at slot 1, slot 2, slot 3. Slot 4 is empty, slot 5 is empty. Yeah, like let's say the par uh, the parking lot created with number of slots 5 because 5 was the input. 
you park uh, you have parked three cars and the slots uh, assigned to them is one two three then four and five is empty then 20 is removed so slot 2 is also empty park that car 1 slot 2 is empty 3 is occupied 4 is empty 5 is empty okay so it's like uh, print that the logged stub code validate the correctness of the parking lot class implementation by performing the following operation If uh, 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 the logged stub code, I think there is already a code created for this. Okay, this code will do that job. We don't need to do worry about anything. Get slots. We just need to call these methods. Get slots. Remove and park. You can get also a hint from this. First is a park, right? Before that, we initialize the class. With the number of slots parking lot slots right so here is my variable let slots right and this constructor uh, these are the number of slots we have these are getting assigned Parking slots, let's say. A zero is less than slots. A plus plus and we can just keep doing push here there will be one variable occupied false mm -hmm. occupied false slot is index slot is k just like my assumption that uh, we can keep adding all the occupied false slot k and whenever uh, I'm coming to this what I can do is I can run a loop const slot of this dot parking slots now I mean this is going to iterate this from the the first index if slot here we can just do car id null right a slot is k car id is null if slot is there and slot dot occupied if this is false we will make it true and what we will do is we will occupy this car parking slot this dot parking lot object and we will just say occupied equal to true and this dot parking slot this dot parking slot and this car id is the car id which we have and here we have one boolean flag so what is the method parks the car with the given car id at the occupied unoccupied slot with the lowest number and returns to if all the it returns to if we are able to do it right so let's say let park is false and because now i'm able to park it so i can just say park equal to true and here I can just return the status return parked okay this looks like uh, good for me occupied is true car id 
this is park then the get slots written the array of all the parking slots where ith element is the id of the car park there or null if the slots is unoccupied return an array of all the parking slots where the ith element uh, i didn't understand this let's see the code get slots so what it is using park that slot this object i plus one object okay if the slot is empty or slot is parked right so we just need to iterate on to this we need to see if uh, which particular car is parked because we also need to return this park that slot one the car id park that slot two car 20 okay so we should return an array of uh, car ids got it and because this is a car id and if object is empty id of the car or null if the slot is unoccupied got it it's a simple right so we just need to iterate and we need to build an array that's it or i can just return i can just run a loop i can return a new array using a simple map this dot parking slot dot map i so here if i dot if there is a car id is there then return this otherwise return null if i dot car id is there then return this or return null so what we are getting we are going to get only the object with the car ids or with the null i mean the, the return array so array will be like this so it will have a car id or null car id something like this and remove <coughs> freeze the parking slot where the car is parked and return true okay so the remove method freeze the parking lot where the car is parked and returns true we return false if the car id is not found okay now let's say freed false parking slot we are getting car id so we need to check two things first is slot is occupied and slot has a car id and here we need to check slot has a car id and one more thing slot dot car id is equal equal to the car id which is being passed if this is the case in that case what we will do is this dot parking slot this dot parking slot okay we are doing a loop i think here also we did the mistake uh, we need to get the index here we got this but we also need to get the index on which we are occupying the car okay so it's better we just convert this into so we just need a key value pair this is just iterating on to this Slot of uh, let's get confused. Okay, let's just a simple let i zero i is less than this dot parking slots dot length i plus plus. Okay, parking slot i. This is an array. So what we are checking is
if this i dot occupied if this is false then we are doing this and we are assigning this variable also same thing we can do here sorry for that we need to just change this logic i0 dot length okay we have to remove it right so first of all this should be occupied if this is occupied and the car id should be the same which we wanted to free if this is the case then we just make it occupied false car id as a null and freed true otherwise if you are not able to free this if we don't find any car okay there are two things freeze the parking where the car is parked if you are able to free it then it returns the true it returns false if the car with the given car id is not found if not found then it automatically going to return false let's validate this code again so here we forgot this this is an array let's initialize to this empty array then and this return car id where it is complaining okay car id this dot parking slot which is an array i can do a map i dot car id Okay, it's i dot car id then. Should we run the test? All are failing. Why? Your output is this parking started, parking full, parking full. Why it is saying parking full? So we are getting the slot. Here we can just check what is the length. You need to debug this a little bit like the parking lot was 5 debug output 5 okay now uh, what we are doing the park method car id park the car with the given car id at the occupied slot with the lost number and returns true Initial it is false. I parking slots dot length five i zero. So it will start with this zero dot occupied. So initially occupied is false. Slot is the the number. Car ID is this. If occupied is false, then it is true, and we are saying occupied true. Okay, I got the problem because once it is occupied then it is occupied right you have to break the execution from there park true and break so once the you are able once you park your car at a particular index you have to break from the loop otherwise you are making all occupied parking at slot park 4 5 empty this is my output i think and all the test cases yes we did it right everything is cool so it's all about reading the problem statement
sometimes you may feel okay we are not able to do this something else is there but it's a very simple problem right the parking lot problem where you are just need to play with an array just a two simple flag occupied or the car ids because here we need to return the car id true false that's it so this is the problem statement i will also copy this code in the gist so you can also play around with this code okay thanks everyone i will submit this and here we are we got the, the intermediate certification